I have always wanted to show you guys the inside of a GPU factory, and thanks to power, color, and framework, we're finally doing it! But there's one small catch. In order to show us absolutely everything from start to finish, they have to shut down absolutely everything from start to finish, meaning that it is costing them hundreds to thousands of dollars a minute, and we are going to absolutely get kicked out after three hours. I think you can take notes faster than that. With the constraints, it's gonna be a bit of a speed run, but maybe that's the fun. Uh, uh, speed fun, like the speedy segue. To our sponsor. Seasonic, you know Seasonic for the reliable and power efficient power supplies, but now you can know them for affordability too. Their Vertex lineup is on sale now at the link in the description. Okay, it's not completely shut down. It'd be pretty boring to tour an abandoned factory, but uh, we're told that this line would be running at anywhere from two to three times the speed during regular production. You can see, it's just, just <laughs> waiting for it. While they're better known as Power Color, Tool has been around since 1997 and has produced graphics cards under multiple of their own brands, as well as for partners like Diamond in the past. They won't disclose their total manufacturing capacity to us, but let's put it this way. They're a tier one AMD manufacturing partner, and even this small Taiwan-based manufacturing line can turn out about 20,000 units a month. They did invite us, right? When you're operating at this kind of scale, Every little detail matters, even the very small ones. Here's a real good example of that. Shipments of surface mount components get inspected via x-ray to ensure that they are exactly what they say they are and that the right quantities are on each one of these tapes. This is done for both new shipments as well as reels that have been used multiple times for small production runs. So you can see this one has multiple count stickers on it and is now down to 3,728 Vs. They also perform manual spot checks for both incoming surface mount components as well as PCBs. This is an engineered, what, flatness meter? I guess it's a super, super flat piece of granite. And basically, see that? If the variance from one end to the other is more than 0.2 millimeters, it's done, it's out. Now that all our components are validated, all we need is a quick anti-static shower and we're ready to visit the SMT line where they're going to be mounted da, 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 to our boards. For step one, we take those trays of PCBs and load them into the end of the line. Our timing is so good. We actually get to see that happen right now. Here we go. Oh, look, there it goes. Next up, we need to apply solder paste to every point on the board where a component will be placed. This is done by essentially just scraping a squeegee that is covered in paste over a stencil with the board sitting underneath. Now, something to note is that these stencils wear out after a thousand or 10,000 placements, so every time they run a new model of GPU through, they have to inspect it to make sure it still has the appropriate thickness. Looks pretty good to me, but no one asked me. They asked the machine. In here, they inspect the application to ensure that it is accurate and it's the right quantity. And if an error gets noticed, the information is looped back to the previous stage so that it knows, hmm, something's not going quite right. Next, we get reunited with our old surface mount component friends who are loaded into the pick and place machine in the optimal locations in order to reach the maximum placement speed of 77,000 components per hour? Holy crap, look at this thing go. I have never seen a machine this fast, which makes sense because this is a state-of-the-art machine that runs at nearly double the speed of their main lines. And you guys have got how many of these things here? One, two, three, four, five of them. But this investment makes a lot of sense when you consider what this facility is for. They're just 15 minutes from their R&D headquarters, so they will often do things like quality analysis so they can transfer that knowledge to the main line or development of new products. So speed and efficiency is of the essence. As you can see, the biggest components go on last with this side of the machine handling VRMs and this side handling display connections and the really good stuff like memory 
and GPU dies, which I'm told I get to load into the machine. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, too far. Is it in the wrong spot? Oh, I missed. You get unlock. Oh. Hey. Okay. Well, I did it mostly right. If your GPU is in the wrong spot, you'll know who to blame. And there it is, a finished board. At least in the sense that a pizza with all the toppings on it is finished. Now we cook. But not in no regular oven, boys. This right here is the world's most advanced pizza oven. Not only does it have different temperature control for the different zones, but they build a special profile for every board that goes through it to ensure that the solder melts absolutely perfectly. And by perfect, I really do mean perfect. At the end of the baking process, they ensure that the solder melted correctly and that every component was positioned exactly perfectly by doing a 3D freaking scan. As you can see, this one, no good. It's got a lifted lead. That is so precise. Now it's done. JK. We still don't have a power connector and there's no capacitors. There are still some components that are better placed by human hands. So let's go visit that line. At least most of them will. 10 to 15% will get pulled aside proactively and sent to the x-ray inspection room where they can use this machine to get a 3D view, my God, that is so cool, of the BGA joints under components that cannot be visually inspected like the memory and the GPU die. Now they let me in. At the first station, each jig gets two GPUs and any eight pin PCIe power connectors. Then we get our fan header followed by capacitors, capacitors, some more capacitors, and finally, capacitors. Once that's all done, the back side of the board gets sprayed with flux. Then it gets pizza ovened again until the end of this machine where, oh my God, that is the coolest thing ever. The back of the board runs across a liquid solder waterfall in order to solder all of the through board components. Man, I feel like a kid in a digital candy store here. After the backside gets soldered, our little tray gets plopped onto this little green belt and goes down for manual inspection. Oh, for some reason I thought it was gonna slide, but that makes more sense. If there's adequate coverage of solder, it goes into the middle. And if there isn't, it goes to the next station. Sometimes there just isn't quite enough solder or two of the points are accidentally bridged and that can be quickly repaired by a skilled technician. The touched up boards then get cleaned, all the schmoo gets removed. Then all the boards come back together for a final visual inspection and our QA technician at the end of the line scans a QR code and says, hey, I checked this, it's definitely good to go. Moving upstairs, you can see we've upgraded the GPUs we're working on a little bit here. These are bound for 7800 XT Hellhound Sakura editions, just like you saw in our cutest PC video. And stage one is, ah yes, visual inspection again, I guess. Right. For what, to make sure nothing broke? Yeah, <laughs> to be extra good and sure. With that out of the way, it's time for assembly to begin in earnest, starting with little plastic washers over all the screw holes to make sure the PCB doesn't get scratched. IO plate and, oh, screwing on the IO plate, that's very important. Next up, back plates go on, followed by those also being screwed in, which is equally important because you don't want your GPU to arrive in pieces. Then, oh God, I love these coolers. That looks gorgeous. All the protective peels come off the thermal pads and pre-applied thermal goop. Oh, that one didn't have any peels on it. I swear I saw one with peels earlier. I'm not gonna worry about that. The point is the fan gets plugged in here. Then we've got one, two, three stations that all apply screws to the cooler through the back of the card, followed by another visual inspection that I think could best be described as sanity check, you know? Does the fan spin? Also a good thing. Wait, what about second final station where each one of these cards gets loaded onto a test bench? They gotta have a lot of test benches. Yes, they do. And unlike the assembly lines, this part of the factory runs 24 seven with every single GPU being loaded into a full Windows environment and running a combination of AMD diagnostic tools and enthusiast ones like 
Unigen Heaven, and Furmark. But hold on a second. One of these things is not like the other. The motherboard's in sideways, and that doesn't look like any desktop graphics card I've ever seen. That's because it's not. It's a mobile GPU, specifically the one for, investment disclosure, Framework for the Framework 16. Massive shout out, by the way, to Tool for being willing to take on this weird, low volume product in an effort to make laptops less disposable. Super cool, really appreciate you guys. And appreciate Framework too for helping hook us up with this tour in the first place. Oh, but, oh, sorry, sorry, it's going back, it's going back. This next room isn't technically part of production, it's more part of development, but on the subject of non-disposability, every new model, oh my God, goes through reliability testing in a 45 degree chamber for an extended period burn-in to ensure that it's not gonna have issues out in the field. Oh, this is truly awful. Then, when they're done in here, they go to the zero degree chamber to make sure that, I don't know, you can game in Antarctica? Coming back to production, it's time for the final step, retail packaging. Now, unfortunately, they're not packaging any GPUs right now, so half of the line here isn't even in use, but rather they're packing up Framework dual M.2 SSD carriers. This first station is flashing firmware. Then the serial number of the board gets paired with the QR code on the sticker for the packaging. Then it gets bagged, boxed, boxed into a bigger master carton box and sent off. Um, everyone gets a souvenir GPU today, right? Nope, they all go here instead, where they're staged on pallets in preparation for shipping to markets like Hong Kong and probably to my friends in the good old US and A. So if you're an American, this right here could be your next GPU. That one. Uh, as long as everything goes according to plan. If it doesn't, it ends up here. The team here handles both internal failures from the production line, trying to rework or salvage any valuable components, as well as failures from end users. This station gives us an error code telling us what exactly is wrong with the card. In this case, it's a bad GPU, which means it goes in the pile and gets transferred over to the other side of the RMA department, where the board gets heated up and the GPU gets removed. Then we go to my friend, the baller. He takes a brand new GPU, installs it in one of these little jigs, and then he's got these little tiny balls of solder that he basically plays, you know those little games that you play as a kid where you have to get all the little balls and all the little holes? Well, he plays that on a GPU, and if he misses one, guess what? The card no worky. Then it goes in the oven where all of the balls get melted and it's ready to be remounted. Now, under normal circumstances, when they find a defective GPU, they just send it to AMD to test, but we asked them very nicely to show us the manual reballing process, so they did. Thanks, guys. Since we were already imposing anyway, we asked very nicely if they could show off the full capabilities of their latest generation BGA rework station and put a GPU back on for us. So my friend is now applying solder paste to the board itself using, oh, okay, yeah, another mask. Now the GPU and the prepared board get loaded back into the rework station, heated, aligned, and reapplied. Obviously, guys, this is not the kind of thing that you would want to do very often, but for diagnostic purposes, sometimes it is necessary. What an incredible tour. Massive shout out to Tool for their hospitality today, and of course, Framework, who helped hook us up with this. Tool asked me to just take one of these random 7800 XT Sakura editions and put a little signature on it. They said, if, uh, if you don't want it, they'll handle the RMA, but I'm just gonna, I don't know, put a little nah, nah, nah. <laughs> So there you have it. <laughs> if you buy a 7800 XT Sakura edition, it might be signed. Hopefully that's something you want. <laughs> At Linus Media Group, the business team has to do a ton of communication, coordination, and writing, for better or worse. That's where Grammarly comes in. They're an AI writing partner that works where you work. And upgrading to Grammarly Premium has saved our business team more time thanks to useful features like tone suggestions. This ensures that the tone of the writing is never too formal nor too friendly. 
It's not what you say, but how you say it. Tone matters. Now, they can tell Linus to stop dropping things so often without being rude. Plus, with the premium app actions feature, they can now link Google Drive links, create tasks on monday.com, or insert GIFs into their emails in one place without switching tabs. And by upgrading to Grammarly Premium, they even get access to 1,000 prompts per month. Sign up and upgrade to Grammarly Premium at grammarly.com slash LTT06. We'll chuck this at the end. Uh, guess we found a broken GPU on the framework line, so uh, QA, it works. And uh, you guys watching to the end of this video works for learning how GPUs are made. If you enjoyed this video, hey, why not check out the Micron factory tour where we saw a different SMT line where I made my own memory module. That was pretty cool. <laughs>